Award from the FedEx St. Jude Invitational. It was a fantastic finish to what's been an extremely close tournament. It all ended with the 11th Tour Playoff of the Year, a three-way playoff between Abraham Anza, Sam Burns and Hideki Matsuyama after they all finished their day tied at first at under 16. All tied again after the first playoff hole. And then history was made a day Abraham Anza will forever remember as he gets his first Tour win. He's been so close all season. Four times he's been runner-up, but Sunday afternoon he was finally victorious. He wins with a birdie on the second playoff hole. Let's hear from Abraham Anser, who's with Amanda Balionis. When I was walking out, I thought Harris made that putt on 17 for birdie, and the, uh, the board said he was 16, so I thought I was like, oh, man, I needed a birdie at the last. And then they tell me, hey, you're in a playoff. He's putting from birdie to tie you guys. I was so confused. I was like, oh, my God, I had no idea what was going on. Uh, Benji, my caddy, he had no idea what was going on either. Um, so we had to regroup, hit a couple putts, and hit some shots and just kind of replayed 18 on my mind on the range. And now we're here. This is surreal. Um, I thought I left so many shots out there on the back nine, but you never know. Golf is crazy. Um, there's been some times that I feel like I, I made enough birdies to win, and I, and I don't win. So this is kind of how it goes, and uh, I'm happy that I got lucky. You had the putt for the outright win in regulation on 18. Like you said, you had time to think about it. Talk me through that approach on the second playoff hole. You stick it close. Sam gets it right inside of you. But what's going through your mind in that moment? Yeah, I mean, on, on regulation, I was, I don't know if you've seen or not, but I probably have a couple bruises on my back. I was smashing my putter grip <laughs> on my back because I didn't want to leave it short. I left a couple short. And I was like, you can hit it seven feet by, and I still left it short. I was so mad at myself because I knew that was going to be an important putt, obviously. And then I told Benji on uh, my second shot here, he's like, hey, we need to go get this. I'm going to go pretty much right at her, just a little right, so it just kind of funnels in. And uh, the shot played perfectly in my in my mind, and it just it came out exactly how I, how I pictured it, and uh, it, it came out great. Well, it certainly did play absolutely perfectly. An answer has the answer. In Memphis, his first career PGA Tour win, the fourth Mexican-born player to win on tour. What a moment it is for Abraham Anser, a nail-biting finish in Memphis, but he gets the job done and wins his first tour title. And a warm welcome to our CBS Sports senior golf writer, Kyle Porter. Kyle, what a wild few hours it has been. Incredibly close three-way playoff. Abraham Anser, though, gets his first tour win. We're at TPC Southwind. I mean, what did you see from him today? And what does this historic win mean for him moving forward? Well, he, he was great, you know, and this is kind of the culmination of what's been a really good career. You know, he's had four solo seconds at, at really nice events on the PGA Tour throughout his career. He just never had that breakthrough win. He's been really close uh, for several years now. And, you know, even on Sunday, Poppy, he wasn't he wasn't great. I mean, it wasn't like he went out and shot uh, 62, 63 to get the win. He shot, an, he shot a nice little 68, got in the house, and then everybody else that was ahead of him kind of came back a little bit, and he took advantage on that second play. Playoff hole. So I like Abraham Answer. He, he's a really good player. I think he's a little bit underrated because he hasn't had that win. He's been good on President's Cup teams. Uh, he's just a really solid player all the way around, and I think you saw that this week. There weren't really any holes in his game. He was a positive strokes gain guy in every single category this week, and that shot he hit into 18 on that second playoff hole for uh, to, you know to set up the five or six foot birdie put there. That was that's big time. That is a big time shot. Sam Burns actually got it inside of him, missed his putt, and uh, Answer had already made his. So it was it was really fun to see him after so many years get the job done and, and get a huge win for his resume. So he finishes the playoff strong. Let's talk about Hideki Matsuyama, though. He started the day nine shots back, but climbed his way up the leaderboard throughout the final round of the playoffs as well. He most recently won the Masters back in April, where he put together those two brilliant closing rounds at the Augusta National. What did you see from him on Sunday? 
Well, I, I saw right here just a whipped out putt that would have won in the first playoff. He was awesome. You know, he was the guy that I was kind of tracking all weekend of like, wait a second here. Hideki's lights out right now. He wasn't making any putts. He hit uh, just two putts on Saturday from, from longer than uh, five feet. Everything else was inside of five feet. He just flushed it all weekend. I mean, he, he hit so many shots. I think he hit 17 of his 36 approach shots on Saturday and Sunday inside of 15 feet. So he gave himself chance after chance after chance and, and he took advantage of it you know he got himself worked himself into that playoff and it's been a nice two-week run for Hideki he's had a uh, obviously when you win the Masters it's a great year but to, to nearly medal uh, in Japan at the Tokyo Olympics in his home country and then to come back uh, all the way you know halfway around the world and, and to play like he did in Memphis all you know throughout the weekend he goes from uh, t30 going into Saturday to getting into a playoff with Abe answer and, and Sam Burns so I I just thought he was he was massively impressive throughout the weekend. Well, Harris English, on the other hand, was leading heading into the final round Sunday. Then he had two double bogeys and a bogey on the back nine. I mean, no player has ever won on tour when doing that in the last 40 seasons. But he didn't go down without a fight. Ultimately, though, falling short at the finish line. Where did English struggle today for you, Kyle? Well, I, I think you see it right here on the par threes. I mean, he, he doubled both of the par threes, hit two balls in the water. It's just you, you can't do that even when you've got a, a nice little lead like that. I went back, Poppy, and looked at this leaderboard after nine holes, and uh, Harris English was four out in front of everybody except for Bryson. He was two in front of Bryson, and then Bryson was two in front of everybody else. So those guys were, were way clear of the rest of the field, and then there was a playoff, and neither of them made it into the playoff. It was kind of astonishing how much. Uh, they faltered. They shot a combined 81 on the back nine. Bryson shot 41. You see Harris English is 40 there. Uh, that's a huge bummer for him because this would have really set him up as the number one guy going into the FedEx Cup playoffs. Would have been his third one of the year. Would have secured a, a spot on the Ryder Cup team. But, you know, he talked after his round said he just, he got, everything got going too fast. You know, he was, he was they were on the clock, him and Bryson's pairing. And then he, he just, he couldn't slow himself down. And I think you saw the results of that coming home. Well, you mentioned Bryson. Despite a great start, he slipped out of contention. He looked a bit deflated heading into the run-in on Sunday. What were your takeaways from what you saw from him? Yeah, it was a it was a bad second nine for Bryson as well. And you know, this is two consecutive events where he's really been in it going into a back nine, and he's completely fallen apart. Uh, so at the U.S. Open, he goes out and shoots 44 on the back nine at Torrey Pines to to fall way out of the top 10 there. And then you know, here he goes to the back nine two back of Harris English and shoots 41. And and this is unusual for Bryson. If you look at the course of his career, he's been somebody who's been pretty clutch on Sundays when he enters kind of inside that top top three or top five going into that, that final 18 holes. Uh, but the last two where he's had a real chance to win the tournament, he's he's kind of melted down. And, and he just, he gets going so hard in the wrong direction that it, it, the body language is just horrible. I mean, he's he's talking to himself, he's he's looking disinterested, and he's just, he, he it's almost like a just a snowball. He just gets, you know, kind of out of control going the other way, and he can't get it back. He can't, he can't reel himself back in. So uh, it's going to be interesting to monitor this going forward because again two straight uh, chances for, for him to win a golf tournament which he couldn't break 40 on the back nine of, a, of, a, uh, of an event. Well it was a drastic changes in the leaderboard on the final few holes. That's the bow on the show in Memphis but coming up next the Wyndham Championship. Who do you think has got the most to gain heading into this last event before the playoffs Kyle? Yeah, you know, there's a lot of guys that are right on that kind of cut line of, of the top 125 that make it into the playoffs, Poppy. And, you know, one of those guys is is Ricky Fowler. He's going to be right at that cut line. Uh, and he's, you know, obviously had a ton of success over the course of his career. He's been a mainstay in the FedEx Cup playoffs uh, for, for the entirety of his career. And so I, I think, you know, he, he's going to, he's not going to lose his PGA Tour card like some other guys might uh, if they don't uh, finish in that top 125. But but I think he does have a, a lot to gain as well as some of those other guys that we're going to be watching that are uh, right around that top 125, maybe a little bit of outside of it going into the Wyndham Championship. So that's what we've got to look forward to, Carl. It's been quite the finale in Memphis Sunday afternoon. All compelling storylines, but a long time coming for Answer, and he finally gets his first tour win. We appreciate do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.